All right, it's gonna be the last one here and then we done for the night. But Nipsey Hussle's killer Eric Holder Jr. sentenced to 60 years in prison for the death of Nipsey Hussle. <laughs> let that man rot, let that man rot. The way they did Nipsey Hussle, hope for the kids right outside his own store. That's what really hurt me the most. Right outside his clothing store, bro, in his neighborhood where he always rep Crenshaw. And not even by that, by another member, by another 60. Like, this shit is just, it's just too much. My heart really can't take it, bro. That's what just shows you when you're too loyal to some dickheads. That breaking news out of Southern California, Eric R. Holder, Eric R. Holder Jr. was sentenced to 60 years to life in prison. He tried all that crazy shit. He tried to plead mentally insane. He tried to lock him. He tried to do all that shit. That shit did not work, buddy. For the murder of Nipsey Hussle back in 2019. Holder was also convicted of two counts of attempted voluntary manslaughter in the death of the famous rapper. Nah, this didn't hit enough. This didn't hit enough. I want to see his face when they give him the time. I want to see his face when he gets to, hold on, Eric Holder. I want to see Eric Holder's face. Right. However, the sentence that uh, the court is about to pronounce, uh, I am very mindful of. Nah, bro, no bullshit. I know I just said Eric Holder tried to play crazy. He looked crazy. Like, he looked like not everything's there. Like, he'd been mentally checked out or some shit. Man, maybe he mentally checked out because he knew he was going to do the rest of his life in prison after killing a person like Nipsey Hussle. Or maybe he just happened to be crazy before all this shit happened, and that's why he committed the act that he did. Um, well, look at him. Bro, look at him. He don't look like he's there. Like, it, like he's mentally checked out. Like, he looked crazy. crazy. Mr. Unless he's still trying to sell Holder's, that shit. Uh, mental health history. You see mental health history and all that shit. I'm also mindful of devastation caused to the victims and their families. So I think uh, this sentence balances both. Um, the principal term in this sentence will be count three, the 245A2 on Mr. Latham. Course. He's shaking his head no. Like I, don't, I, you see, I haven't been to prison that much. These dudes that go to prison every week, they already know the coding in there. That shit sound like it's just a whole lot of time. That's the midterm of three years in state prison. For the gun, there will be an additional four years in state prison consecutive. He's probably happy right now. Like, oh shit, yeah, that's, that's only nine years, right? What, what, what are we looking at? Eight years, seven years? And then for the rape bodily injury allegation that was found true, it will be... Uh, three years consecutive to that. So for count three, it will be a total of 10 years in state prison. As to count two, which was the attempted voluntary manslaughter, Mr. Layton being the victim, uh, the court has doubts as to the viability of that count because there was no provocation uh, by Mr. Layton. Same holds true for Mr. being the waiver. Yo, Eric Holder just looks like a maniac. The way he's just there shaking his head like, no, no. He's breaking it down. He knows he's screwed. Uh, the court believes that uh, it is 654. Uh, so that the court would impose the measure of three down. years plus the the four notes. years and the three years, but stay uh, those sentences. If, as to count five, uh, the 245A2 as to Mr. Uh, being in uh, The court uh, selects the midterm of three years plus the four years for the, that's the midterm for the use of the gun. Uh, that's a total of seven years, but run that concurrent. As to uh, count four, the attempted uh, voluntary manslaughter, again, this court feels that uh, 654 is out. So is he already at 17 years? Because we were at 10 on the first charge, now we're at 7, and now he's about to get the manslaughter charges? And that's what brings it to 6. So that uh, it would impose the 3 years, uh, the midterm, plus 4 years for the gun, but stay. Once again, if the court is incorrect about that application, it would be the midterm of 3 years, plus 4 years for the gun, and that would run concurrent. As to count 6, Penal Code Section 2980081, possession. This thing got mad charges for all that shit. So they all end up just adding up 10 years, 5 years, 6 years, 7 years, and they just making them all run. Like, you can't do them all at the same time. Because look, he kind of, he would have got, he would have really, like, like got away with shit if they would have let him do all his charges at the same time, like all the time at the same time. But it looks like you had to finish one to start the next, and that's how he got screwed. The they stacked them, the basically. <laughs> As this was the uh, gun used, or one of the guns used uh, uh, by 
the defendant. The uh, court feels this is 654 and will select the uh, midterm of two years and stay that. Uh, otherwise, it would be two years concurrent. As to count one, the murder in the first degree of Mr. Askadon, the sentence will be the term prescribed by law, which is 25 years to life. In addition, 25 years to life. Okay, that's I'm like, yo, where's this big numbers coming in? Because Jesus Christ, they're just gonna hit him over the head with three to five, three to six, seven, eight, until he end up getting all the way up to sixty. And there will be the 1222.53e allegation, uh, which is consecutive. That will be an additional 25 years to life. So for count one alone, it would be 50 years to life. Uh, the total sentence would be 60 60 years to life in prison. The court should note that the other enhancements found true as to count one by the jury, the 1202.53B and the 1202.53. Look at his face after they told him 60 years to life. It's like he just gave up right there even more. Like, look at him. Like, he's falling asleep as they're speaking to him. Like, Eric Holdner is no longer there. This is what I try to tell you guys sometimes. You let emotions take over and you do a crime that's insane. And not only is the person dead that you took out, but when you get life in prison, you're also basically dead. And not even that, his family's crying because you killed him. Now your family's crying because you're doing the rest of your life behind bars and they'll never see you again. So it's kind of like you're dead as well. And look at him. He just looks like he's mentally not there. Like he checked out the day that that crime happened after he put his brothers through all that. Supposedly his family was scared for their safety in California. I heard a lot of this stem from him trying to shake Nip's hand, Nip not trying to do that. Also. His girl coming back to when he while he was getting the burger at Nipsey's little plaza, asking Nip for a picture. So not only does a dude disrespect you, to his term, again, supposedly Cowboy said that never happened. Guy tells you, yo, go get your paperwork checked. Dudes are talking crazy and you can come back and talk to me. But your girl, she could take a picture of me. That's probably the shit that pushed him right over the limit because his girl said as soon as they got back in the whip, he's like, yo, just drive me to the corner real quick, drive the whip through the back alley, whatever. And that's when he planned the whole shit and ran back out the whip and ran down the alley and shot Nip. And we seen what else happened through there because a lot of the stuff he did after shooting Nip, you can tell that there was a lot of hate in him. There was a lot of emotions. It wasn't like a random, you know, I just got mad at the moment. It looked this dude's been mad at him for a while. Or just back to how we talked earlier. You're just a shitty person. You worked for nothing in your life. And you know what you do the best? People that have worked for nothing in their life other than blame the Illuminati and the Freemasons and New World Order for why their life so shitty. They love to hate on those that have worked super hard their entire life for everything that they got and try to take it from those. So that's why I always tell my boys, make sure you are strapped every single day you go to the club. But look at look at him. Look at him. This is sad.